Today, we are discussing GDP Val, the AI benchmark that we have all been waiting for. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Man, some days things are just happening, and this is one of those days. We have so many announcements. We have, in fact, companies competing with themselves and their own announcements. Our entire main episode is about ChatGPT Pulse, which is this new background agent that suggests a new paradigm of ambient AI and the future of AI personal assistance. And yet for me personally, that's not even the most exciting open AI announcement today. Instead, that title belongs to GDP Val, a new evaluation that they say measures AI on real-world economically valuable tasks. Evals ground progress they write in evidence instead of speculation and help track how AI improves the kind of work that matters most. Now, this is something I've been talking about a lot recently. You might have heard me talk about the idea of needing a utility score or a different way of looking at what a new model means for the unlocking of new use cases. I was thinking about this first in the context of Nano Banana, where I saw all of these people saying, yeah, but it's just better at editing in one part for another part as though that somehow undermined its novelty because it wasn't better at things like native base generation. But it turns out that the things that it was better at unlocked a huge amount of very commercially valuable use cases. So you have that phenomenon, plus the fact that our existing benchmarks are so washed, and it's clear that we've needed something else. Well, OpenAI is stepping up to the plate on this one with their introduction of GDP Val, which measures model performance on economically valuable real-world tasks specifically benchmarked to 44 different occupations. They say that it's called GDP Val because, quote, we started with the concept of gross domestic product as a key economic indicator and drew tasks from the key occupations in the industries that contribute most to GDP. In their announcement post, they go big. They write, people often speculate about AI's broader impact on society, but the clearest way to understand its potential is by looking at what models are already capable of doing. History shows that major technologies from the internet to smartphones took more than a decade to go from invention to widespread adoption. Evaluations like GDP Val help ground conversations about future AI improvements in evidence rather than guesswork and can help us track model improvement over time. So what does this measure? Well, like I mentioned, it spans 44 occupations across the top nine industries that contribute to US GDP. The full GDP Val set includes 1,320 specialized tasks, each of which was crafted and vetted by professionals with at least 14 years of experience from each of these fields. Every task, they say, is based on real work products such as a legal brief, an engineering blueprint, a customer support conversation, or a nursing care plan. Unlike benchmarks, they write, which involve synthetically creating tasks in the style of an academic exam, GDP Val focuses on tasks based on deliverables that are an actual piece of work that exists today. They also write that GDP Val tasks are not simple text prompts. They instead come with reference files and context, and the expected deliverables include documents, slides, diagrams, spreadsheets, and multimedia. They do say that it still doesn't reflect the full nuance of many tasks, but obviously this gets us much closer in that direction. So what are some of the tasks? They give an example from a producer, an order clerk, and a manufacturing engineer. For the producer, the prompt and task context is, you're a video producer for an advertising agency prepared to onboard a new project, a 60-second live-action B2B photo shoot. The client has set up a kickoff call for this project on Monday, July 7th, 2025, and set a deadline for final delivery of the video on Friday, August 29th, 2025. Then there's a whole bunch of additional context, like a huge, huge amount of it, and the so-called experienced human deliverable was a plan to get all the work done in a calendar that lays it all out. Now, you might be asking how they grade this, given how comprehensive it is. Well, they are going old school with this. Basically, they rely on expert graders, professionals from the same occupations that are represented in the data set. The graders are asked to blindly compare model-generated deliverables with those produced by task writers without knowing which is AI versus human. Graders offer critiques and rankings, ranking the human and AI deliverables, and classifying each as better, as good as, or worse than one another. In addition to that, they also created detailed scoring rubrics for their occupations, adding a layer of consistency and transparency. Finally, they also built an automated grader on top of that, which is an AI system that's trained to estimate how human experts would judge a given deliverable. They're releasing that tool right now at evals.openai.com, but they say that it's not yet as reliable as the expert graders, and so are not replacing them with it. Couple really interesting takeaways. First of all, the models are winning or tying industry expert performance at a pace of about a quarter to a half the time. They find that there is clear linear progress up, with performance more than doubling from GPT-4.0, which was released back in spring of 24, to GPT-5, which was released this summer. 
Interestingly, and with big kudos to OpenAI for still releasing this, they found Claude Opus 4.1 as the most performant model, meaningfully above even GPT-5 high. Now for OpenAI, this is very clearly just a beginning. They're already identifying areas where there is work to be done. They want to expand it to more occupations and more tasks. They also note that the current version is one shot, so it doesn't capture cases where a model would need to build context or improve over multiple drafts. They also note that in the real world, tasks aren't always clearly defined, so there is a ton of work to be done, but man, is this such a productive and powerful area to be working on. I may have been overstating it slightly when I said that this is the AI benchmark that we've all been waiting for, but it is certainly the AI benchmark that I personally have been waiting for. I could go on and just make this just two full mains stacked together, but I did also want to briefly touch on the announcement of a new feature for Meta, which they are calling Vibes. It's a new dedicated feed in the Meta AI app that is exclusively short-form AI-generated videos. This is the first output of their collaboration with Midjourney and Black Forest Labs. And Nick St. Pierre writes, think reels but AI and interactive. You can create and remix vids, make image and video edits, relight, restyle, add music, and publish. Meta, for their part, calls it a new way to discover and create AI videos and say that it's designed to make it easier to find creative inspiration and experiment with Meta's AI media tools. Now, if you had to guess, what would you think the response to this was going to be? Maybe we get a little bit of creative enthusiasm, excitement to see all these generations in one spot. Maybe we get a little bit of skepticism, given that it's Meta, and their job is to keep our attention firmly locked on their apps. Maybe we get literally nothing but scorn and utter derision. And if your guess was that last one, you are by far the most correct here. Railway founder Jake writes, What we do for money, what we choose to build, these say a lot about who we are. I work hard every day because this is not the future I would like to live in. Sam McAllister said, Excited to share Slop, a new slop trough for you all to enjoy. Baselord had perhaps the most crisp response, resharing Alexander Wang's post with the simple caption, Mega F this. Bloomberg's Odd Lots podcast host Joe Weisenthal writes, Everyone else has already weighed in, but I too feel compelled to say that this all looks like pure garbage. Dean Ball writes, the meta-algorithmic video slop in this post is from a division of meta called superintelligence. In what sense is this superintelligence? In what sense is this on the critical path to superintelligence? Shame is underrated, and this is shameful. Ruxandra Teslo writes, I've exited my naive techno-optimism era, and I will unabashedly state we should shame this stuff. That's not how we should use AI. To further fry our brains and turn us into walking zombies, we should build real things and avoid these cursed use cases from the 2010s era. Matthew Iglesias writes, is he really excited to share this? To me, that's the truly scary possibility. Is there a company full of smart, talented, hardworking people who are excited to bring the world more short-form video? Now, even I, who has a sense for how people react to most meta announcements, didn't quite expect the utter vitriol that this thing is getting. Here's my take on it. One, I do think that there was always going to be this question, as Zuckerberg was out recruiting his superintelligence team, around what they were going to use all of that brain and computing power for. It seemed like behind the scenes, a lot of the reasons that people were saying no is that they assumed that they would just be forced into having to use AI to keep people's attention firmly fixed in the meta family of apps rather than trying to do something actually meaningful, at least in the way that they define meaning. The flip side is all of the distribution platforms are going to have to reconcile and deal with AI content in some way. As the cost of AI content production comes down dramatically and it becomes easier than ever to produce video content, it is just going to absolutely flood the channels, meaning that the power of the discovery algorithms gets even more powerful. I tend to think that consumer demand might force, at least in the short term, some sort of explicit divide between AI and non-AI content, although ultimately you got to think that it's likely to blend. So I guess on that front, at least having it segregated in a different experimental part of the app means that people can avoid it if they don't want it. The other thing is, it feels completely inevitable to me that this new set of creative tools will generate some new social platform. It's kind of the way that it always works. It is very rare that the platform from the last era of technology is the platform for the new era when it comes to social content, although I'm not sure yet that just Instagram Reels or TikTok but for AI video is the final form. Entrepreneur Eugenia Kudia writes, Yes, the next huge consumer AI winner will be a social platform. No, it will not be this. As if to make the point that everyone is going to have to deal with this, we also got news that Spotify was taking a bunch of actions to tamp down on AI on its platforms as well. In a post on its website on Thursday, Spotify said that it had removed 75 million what it called spammy tracks. They wrote, 
The pace of recent advances in generative AI technology has felt quick and at times unsettling, especially for creatives. At its best, AI is unlocking incredible new ways for artists to create music and for listeners to discover it. At its worst, AI can be used by bad actors and content farms to confuse or deceive listeners, pushing slop into the ecosystem and interfere with authentic artists working to build their careers. That kind of harmful AI content degrades the user experience for listeners and often attempts to divert royalties to bad actors. Now, part of what's going on here is that this is not Spotify saying that people can't experiment with AI music, but people right now are using a flood of AI to try to game the system and capture ad revenue. Spotify has introduced new policies around impersonation, AI voice clones, and are exploring a number of other protection tactics as well. I think it's an interesting first step, but I continue to believe that we are likely to see, again, at least in the short term, entirely segregated experiences for AI-generated music. And certainly you got to think that these companies are all going to be watching the responses to things like MetaVibes and these announcements from Spotify to try to understand what consumer pressure is going to push them to do. In any case, it continues to be a fascinating time. That's going to do it for today's Not So Brief Headlines. Next up, the main episode.